This video is the unpacking and setup and first run of the Monport 40 watt with light burn. The first thing that you'll notice is that it will come double boxed, saran wrapped, and wrapped in styrofoam. Remove the accessories from the top, take the machine out of the box, and put it up onto your workbench. You'll notice there are a few accessories that will be in the bag. We'll cover the accessories in just a moment. Just put those on the side on the side for a few moments. Take the machine out. Take the saran wrap off of the machine. And on the inside, you'll see some styrofoam as well as a water pump in the white box and the exhaust hose up in the top. These are the accessories from left to right. You have your clamp for the exhaust hose, a piece of acrylic, some double sided tape, the water pump, the exhaust hose itself, power cable, owner's manual, spanner wrench, focus guide, USB-C cable, some silicone in case you need to change your tube, as well as some protective glasses. So we'll start on the inside and we're going to remove this panel from the machine and by taking out the four nuts off of the four bolts with the spanner wrench. Then we're going to peel off the paper that's on the acrylic. You're going to have to peel this off from both sides, reinstall it on the cover, and tighten down the nuts. The next thing that we're going to do is pull this, the hoses through the back. We're going to disconnect them from each other up front and then pull them through the back. And then we're going to move on and start taking off the protective coatings on the stainless inside the machine itself. You want to remove these because these can melt and just cause your problems later. So remove all of the protecting co protective coating that's on the inside. The next thing we're going to do is take out the four screws that hold the base pit plate in place. And we're going to do this so that we can gain access to the work clamp that's down below. This can normally be your base plate that you can put your material on, but below that there is also a clamp that you can clamp material in place. If you pull back on it, you can now clamp a piece of material in there in order to laser it that way. Most people use the base plate. Now to open the rear of the machine, you're going to need to remove this screw where the handle is. And these hinges here are going to be painted. Just tap it with a hammer to release them. And you'll be able to pull those out, those pull pins, so that you can remove the back cover. Staying on the back side, you have the 110 input, you have the ground wire, and you have the water pump plug on the right side. Now on the 110 input, there is a built-in fuse on this. All you have to do is pry this cover open to gain access to the fuse should you ever have a power outage and the fuse blows when the power comes back on. Make sure if you have a power outage that you turn the machine off at the switch so that there's no power spike when it comes back on. Looking at the laser tube now with the cover off, you see the uh, identification label. This one is rated at peak power of 42 watts. This is a Young Lee tube, which is a very high quality tube. It's second only to the Recce. You see on this side is the water outlet and you have your black wire, which is your low voltage return. You'll see all the mirrors are hot glued in place. That red wire is coupled with a ceramic coating. So that is a ceramic block and the wires are joined together, inserted into the ceramic block and filled with silicone. The next thing we'll do is go ahead and connect the water outlet on the laser to the water inlet on the chiller and the water inlet on the laser to the water outlet on the chiller. And it's important that you push these hoses all the way up to the back and then put the clamp on, but don't make it too tight because you can deform and actually break the hose, the silicone hose itself. So 
pushed them all the way to the back, put, you know, put the clamp on and only tighten it a little bit. Now for good measure, one thing that I do is I put in some Dawn detergent into the water chiller up on top. Now four or five or six drops is, is good. And another thing I put in is the Tetra right behind it, the Algicide. You can get that at Walmart. Four or five drops of that is good. And the what the dish soap does is it keeps the, it lets the bubbles move through the tube. So there's no restriction. It coats the inside of the tube and that lets all of the bu bubbles evacuate the tube. You want, you want to make sure that you never have any bu bubbles in your laser tube that can cause problems. I'm going to fill it with a gallon and a half of water. And now we're going to just remove both side panels because we want to make sure that that filter that's on both sides of the chiller is attached properly on all four prongs. Sometimes during shipping, the filters come off and then they serve no purpose. So go ahead and snap that back on, on both sides, and we are ready. So I'm going to turn on the chiller. And it's normal for it to take a couple seconds to turn on. And now you'll see it's at a little over 23 degrees Celsius. The water is flowing. So now we're going to move on to the power bay. Same thing, we're going to remove that screw where the handle is and open up the power bay on the machine. Now both with both doors open, we can inspect everything. Make sure that everything is in place, plugged in, and ready to go. I like to take a good inspection of all of the wires to make sure they're all plugged properly and you're not really going to have a problem with the Monport laser because Monport requires that all of these wires be hot glued in place so there is no problems during the shipping. And you'll see that every wiring connection is hot glued in place. There is your power supply, control board, everything is inside this bay. If we look at the top of the bay, you'll see the power switch on the bottom, then the ammeter, and then comes the water temperature. And then on top of that is the power supply temperature, and to the right is your emergency stop button. You will need to turn that emergency stop button to the right in order to use the machine and then you can power it on and off by the red switch in the front. On the side we have an opening for the USB connection and we'll get a close-up picture of that in a moment. I like to put a magnet inside the power supply bay and keep all of the screws that I take out, just drop them onto the magnet. You can also keep other little supplies here like your focal gauge and things like that so you don't lose them. This is a close-up photo of the power supply itself and here you can see that everything is plugged in hot glued. Now we'll move on to the control board and you'll see everything here is hot glued as well. Next is the USB connection. It is a USB type C and the cable is provided with your kit. So I'd like to plug in that cable with my left hand inside, right hand outside. Makes it easier to plug that way. So now you can see we have the chiller started. We can move around to the back. Make sure that everything, nothing is leaking and that's the first thing we want to check is a leak test. Make sure there's no water dripping from anywhere on the right side, which is the outlet and also on the left side, which is the inlet. 
Just make sure that the entire bay is dry here. And you can see that I've already attached my... Now if you, for some reason, get an obstruction in those tubes, you will hear the alarm. And that's one good thing about using the chiller. If you get a kink in your hose, that alarm will go off on the chiller. That is normal. So I've attached the exhaust hose here and I've attached that to the air purifier and now this machine is ready for its first run. And here is the entire setup. You'll see that after only about eight minutes it's down to 18.6 degrees. This is an intelligent chiller from the factory. It will be already set and it will keep the water at the right temperature. This is the air purifier on the right side. And again, on the chiller, it will keep it within five degrees of room temperature. So I'm gonna turn that emergency stop button now with the switch in, in the power on position. You'll see that it turns on at 21 milliamps, which is the highest uh, amount of power that you can use on this. It is regulated, so you can't burn up the tube. I personally use it at about 17 milliamps or so and you just turn the knob to adjust it. Below the knob is a test button. It's called test. That is what most people know as a pulse button, the yellow button right there. So now we know that the water is flowing. There are no air bubbles in the tube. The water is at the proper temperature to use the laser. You can turn on the exhaust. In this case, I didn't turn on the exhaust because the only thing we're gonna do now is just pulse the laser and we're going to uh, make sure that it fires and as long as it fires okay I'm pretty confident that the mirrors are going to be aligned so I have gone and set the milliamp reader meter excuse me <laughs> to two milliamps and I'm going to press the test button and there we go and it fires perfectly I will press it again just to make sure and you can see there that we've got a nice circular hole in the wood. Moving over to show you by the meter, if I press that button where it says test, you'll see it will pulse at about 2 milliamps. There you go, 2, 2 to 3. That's all you need to do pulse tests. This is the focal gauge that comes with your machine. And what you do is set it down underneath the laser head. And that will give you the proper distance for focus to your material. Okay, so I am now in Lightburn and I am ready to set up the Monport K40 with Lightburn. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And we see that the computer has recognized it. So that is a good sign. I'm gonna come over to devices and I'm gonna try find my laser and we'll see what happens. So I'll hit next and it did find it. So you can see Gerbil 300 by 200. So that's good. I'm gonna click add device. Uh, we're gonna call this one Monport 40 watt light burn and the size is correct at 300 by 200. So I'll click next and it homes to the rear left. So I will click next again and I'm gonna go ahead and click finish and say, okay. So now I've done this all without turning the laser on. So you can see up here that it says busy right now and we did not connect so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to turn the laser on and then we're going to see how well this connects so right now it's just connected to the main board all right so here we are in lightburn i've got the uh, laser set up this is me over here <laughs> hello uh, we're in the console over here we've done the installation and the next thing that we've got to do is turn it on and see how it works. So I'm not gonna turn the chiller on for this one because uh, we're just gonna 
check it and make sure that it's working. So I'm just gonna hit the power on switch right here on the machine and let's see what happens in Lightburn. So let's come over to the laser tab and right click on devices. And there it goes, it found it. And it did home properly. So we are good to go here. I'm so happy that everything is going so smooth on this. If we come to the console, you can see over here that we have got the Monfort laser and all of the uh, information is in here. So let's go to um, dollar dollar. You have to bear with me. I'm on a new laptop here. So a new camera system, new setup over here in the wood shop. So it's kind of hard for me to get these things done properly the first time, but we'll give it a shot anyway. So uh, you'll see that all the commands in here are good. Uh, we're just going to do one more. And everything looks perfect. So let's just, just for fun, uh, let's just move it around a bit, see how it responds. So let's see how this responds now. I'm going to click on the map icon, click on the middle of the screen, and we can see that that's working fine. So let's move it over to the right, move it down to the right. Let's move it up to the right, <laughs> all around the work area, and then we'll send it home and everything seems to be working just fine. So there you have it. Unboxing, setup, and the first run of the Monport 40 watt light burn compatible CO2 laser. The CW5200 chiller, as well as the fume extractor. The only thing left to do now is to design a project in light burn and start making something. I hope this video helped you with the unboxing and the setup for your CO2 laser. Enjoy.